This is a puffer fish. This one stays in the ocean. And this is also a puffer fish. And this beauty is going right in my garden today. So what exactly is a puffer fish hydrangea? And does it need as much water as an actual puffer fish does? <laughs> I'm Laura and welcome to Garden Sanity. Today, I'm gonna to be planting my own puffer fish hydrangea in my garden. And once I do that, then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna show you some images of a mature puffer fish so you can see exactly how beautiful the blooms are. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about the growing zones and all the growing information you need. So if you haven't added one yet to your garden, maybe this will inspire you to do so. And if you have added one recently, maybe I'll provide some extra info that you didn't know before. We'll see. So let me get started planting and we'll go from there. So the first thing you see me doing is removing a dianthus. There's actually two. There's an annual dianthus that just sort of came back in a really not so great way every year, but it still kind of came back. And then there's a perennial dianthus called Bright Lights. And I love this in the springtime when it's covered with flowers, but then that's it. I get it's supposed to rebloom, but all I get are a few blooms here and there. It's never much to speak of. And when you're looking at the garden from a distance, it actually just looks like it's a hole. You don't even see the pretty green color of the leaves. So even though it's an evergreen plant, I am removing this. I thought about planting it elsewhere, but if I don't like it, why would I want to put it elsewhere? So I'm sorry, bright lights, you're going. So when I'm planting any shrub or perennial, I always dig a hole that is slightly wider than the container that it comes in, but just as deep because you want the same soil line that's at the top of the pot to be the same soil line once it's planted in your garden. I never amend the soil. The only thing I will put in at the bottom is Biotone, which is a starter fertilizer. And when you take it out of the pot, if you notice that there's a lot of roots and some of them seem to be wrapped around themselves, you can take the pointy edge of a trowel or your pruners, your fingers, if you've got sharp fingers, I guess, <laughs> and you need to tease those roots apart so that they just don't keep growing in a circle or growing around each other. You want to encourage those roots to separate so that they can spread out once they're planted in the ground. So now this is all planted and I want to tell you a little bit more about the pufferfish hydrangea. As I mentioned, this is proven winners and you may be familiar with the bobo hydrangea, also proven winners. Now a bobo hydrangea gets three feet tall to about four feet wide at its most mature. And what it's known for is its ability to bloom to the point where you almost don't see the leaves on the shrub. So think of blooms from the bottom all the way to the top, and they're big, fluffy, panicle flower heads, just like this one looks like. Now with a bobo, you will get the flower heads that will change from a lime green ivory color eventually to a pale pink as the summer season goes on into fall, temperatures get cooler, nighttime temperatures kick in, it'll change to pink. So with a puffer fish, you will have the same coverage you will have to the point where you don't really see the green leaves. It'll be covered like crazy with these beautiful fluffy panicles. However, the difference is that these panicles start out with an ivory white color. They're eventually going to develop into a lime green color. And with other panicle hydrangeas, they start out lime green. So this is kind of a neat thing. And it'll develop into lime green. It never goes to pink. However, when it gets very fluffy, and it gets that beautiful lime green color at the very tip, and I'll come in so you can see this one just starting a little bit, it develops a little extra sprig on the end of white flowers. It's really neat, and you'll get that all over the shrub. Now in terms of size, the pufferfish hydrangea is a little bit bigger than bobo. So whereas bobo is three feet tall by four feet wide at its most mature, the pufferfish is three to five feet tall by three to five feet wide. So it's a little bit bigger, but not much bigger. And it's, if you need a comparison, if you have little lime hydrangeas, if you have little lime punch hydrangeas, or little quick fire hydrangeas, all of those are the same exact size. So this fits nicely into the landscape. In fact, what I wanna do is let's measure what it looks like right now. I wanna start doing this as I plant new plants so we can see together over time how big these grow. So first we'll do the height and we'll see what this looks like. So right now, let's see right here. So right now 
it is about if you go to the very tip it's about two feet tall and then we will go from edge of leaf to edge of leaf and it goes a little bit bigger so that's about I'd say about 30 inches if you go all the way to this tip so the growing zones for this are zones three to eight and it takes full sun to part sun but if you're in the more of the southern growing zones like I'm in zone seven here in southern New Jersey and we've had kind of brutal hot and humid summers the past couple of years you're probably going to want to give it a little bit of afternoon shade morning sun is great but give it a little bit afternoon shade and if you're in zone eight I'd say do the same thing if you're in cooler zones you could probably get away with this in full sun the soil is going to be the same it doesn't need super moist soil to the point of being wet but it does like to be on the moist side so you want to make sure it gets enough water and you'll easily be able to tell because these leaves will kind of get a little bit you'll get a little wilting a little bit of them not being up out and straight but just kind of hanging down a little bit So now let's look at this shrub up close. Now this was sent to me by Spring Meadow Nursery, which is the home of proven winner color choice shrubs. And they asked me to trial this in my garden and it arrived looking absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this. This is beginning of September and look how beautiful it looks. Now there's a little bit of some leaves that don't look so hot, but I'm not even pulling those off. I'll just leave them on here. I just, when I get new plants, I like to get them in the ground and just let them get acclimated as is. And what I did when I planted them is you saw I added a little bit of biotone and that's all I'm gonna add. No need to add any fertilizer because again, it is September. We don't want to encourage too much growth. We more wanna encourage the roots. But you can see new flowers coming here, new flowers right there, new flower here, I mean, it's just amazing. Almost on every single section, every single stem, there are little flowers about to come out. Not that one. So that one uh, still has to, you still got to work on your leaf stem guy. And you too. Get working. I want to see more flowers. <laughs> but this is really nice. Now, one thing you could do when you're planting this time of year if you want to really, like, let's say you are in a colder zone than zone seven, you can cut off the flowers. Of course, take them inside and put them in a vase, but cut off the flowers so that the plant is just focused on growing roots. It's not going to focus on producing these flowers. And that's a good way to get your plant settled in before you start getting the first frost. Now I'm in zone seven and our falls are always mild. Except for last year when we had that crazy frost in October. But normally, these are very mild falls for us, so I can afford to have these flowers on a little bit longer and enjoy them while not being too worried about the roots getting established. So right now, this is the one flower head that I can show off <laughs> on this shrub. But you can see how fluffy it is, how fluffy it's going to get because some of the petals haven't opened yet. And look at the top. You see that cute little sprig right here? That is just cute. So that is going to look really nice, especially when it pops open with all its petals. And to give you a better perspective of where I planted it, this is in my limelight hydrangea tree bed. So there's the gorgeous limelight hydrangea tree, which is just looking fabulous. And what you see blooming down here are Blue Star Calamaris, also called False Aster or Japanese Aster. And I'm always in love with these beautiful periwinkle flowers. And there's some hellebores back there that'll provide some beautiful winter color along with, go around this way, along with the, uh, this is a Mediterranean pink winter heath. I almost said it was Kramer's Red, but this is Mediterranean pink. 
Now, that'll be nice winter color when there will just be dried flower heads that I will keep on this pufferfish hydrangea. And behind it is the lavender chiffon rosa Sharon. You see the flowers are just beautiful and still opening up like crazy. I mean, wow, just stunning. There you go, there's nature <laughs> right there. I love that they get pollinated by moths, bees, wasps, flies, and hummingbirds. It's just wonderful. At the same time, I may move this lavender chiffon Rosa Sharon to another spot in our yard next year. I'm debating what to do there. I think I may. I think I, it needs maybe a little bit more sun than it's getting, especially when this is in full bloom. It does give it a little bit more shade than I think it needs to bloom more prolifically, but we'll see. It's just an idea I had. So there you go. That is the pufferfish hydrangea. Very adorable. I would say it's more adorable than the actual puffer fish that it's named after. <laughs> Although I do think they're cute too. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you grow this, let me know. And until next time, happy gardening.